There was a priest named Zachariah who went to God's house one day to worship. As soon as he was inside, the angel Gabriel appeared. Zachariah, you and your wife Elizabeth will have a son. You will name him John. But how is it possible for Elizabeth and me to have a son? We're too old. Zachariah, because you do not believe me, you will not be able to talk until after the baby is born. And suddenly, Zachariah could not speak. Just as the angel Gabriel had said, a baby boy was born to Zachariah and his wife, Elizabeth. Their friends were very happy for them. Name him Zachariah after his father. Zachariah still couldn't talk. So he wrote down, his name is John. As soon as Zachariah wrote that, his voice returned. The angel Gabriel went to see a young Israelite woman named Mary, who was engaged to marry Joseph the carpenter. Don't be afraid, Mary. God is pleased with you. You will have a baby and will call him Jesus. He will be the Son of God. This was a big surprise to Mary. When Joseph heard that Mary was going to have a baby, he didn't know what to think because they weren't married yet. But God sent an angel to talk to Joseph in a dream. This baby is from God. Name him Jesus. He will save people from their sins. When Joseph heard God's plan, he married Mary. When everyone had to register in their hometown, Joseph took Mary to his hometown, Bethlehem. But the town was busy and there was no place for them to sleep. Finally, Joseph found a stable, and that's where God's baby son was born. His first bed was on the hay in a manger where animals were fed. Nearby, sleepy shepherds were watching their sheep. Suddenly, an angel appeared in the sky so bright. Don't be afraid. I have good news for you. A baby was born in Bethlehem tonight. He is your savior. You will find him lying in a manger. Then, the sky was filled with angels singing. The shepherds hurried to find baby Jesus. They told Mary and Joseph everything the angel had said. There were also royal visitors from the Far East, three wise men who had followed a bright star they bowed to worship and gave expensive gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. When Jesus was 12 years old, his family traveled to Passover along with many other families, as they always had before. When the celebration was over, 
Mary and Joseph started to return home. Joseph, do you know where Jesus is? He was with my cousin's family last time I saw him. After traveling all day, Mary and Joseph realized Jesus wasn't with any of their friends or relatives. They were very worried and started back to Jerusalem, looking for him all along the way. Where is my son? By the time they got back to Jerusalem, it was nighttime, too late to look for Jesus. The next day, they searched all around the big city. I'm looking for a boy about this tall. But couldn't find Jesus anywhere. Another night came without any sign of him. On the third day of their search, Mary and Joseph were walking past the temple, a place where God's people went to worship. Coming from inside the temple, they heard a familiar voice. They rushed inside, and there was young Jesus talking with some teachers, just like he was one of them. He asked them questions. He answered theirs. His mother had a question, too. Son, why did you stay behind? We were worried about you. Oh, you should have known. I must be where my father's work is. John became a preacher when he grew up. He lived in the desert and ate grasshoppers and honey. John told the people to change their hearts and lives and ask forgiveness for their wrongs because Jesus was coming soon. One day, when Jesus was grown up too, he came to the place where John was preaching and baptizing people. Jesus asked John to baptize him in the river. Lord, it is you who should baptize me. Let it be this way for now. We should do all things that are right. So John agreed to baptize Jesus. As Jesus came up out of the water, God's Spirit, like a dove, came down to him from heaven. God spoke and said, This is my Son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. watching people put their money into the collection box at the temple where God's people worshipped. Some rich people were very proud as they put in a lot of money. Then a very poor woman came.
In went her two small coins. This woman gave more than the rich people with many coins. The rich people gave only what they did not need. But this poor woman gave all the money she had. That evening, Jesus and his followers got into a boat and set out across the lake. Soon a strong wind began to blow. Waves came over the side of the boat. Jesus' followers were very frightened. But Jesus was fast asleep at the back of the boat. The followers went back and woke Jesus. Teacher, don't you care about us? We'll drown! Be quiet. Be still. Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? What kind of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Jesus loved little children, and whenever he could, he helped them. One day, an important man begged Jesus to come to his house and heal his sick son. But Jesus didn't go. Instead, he said, Go home. Your son will live. The man believed Jesus and went home. But before he got there, his servants met him and said, Your son is well. Jesus also helped a little girl. Her father's name was Jairus, and he was an important man. My little daughter is dying. Please come and pray for her so she will get well and live. But before Jesus could go to the little girl, she died. Still, Jesus went to see her. With the child's mother and father and three of his followers, Jesus went into the girl's room and took her hand in his. Little girl, stand up. And she did. She was well. Great crowds of people followed Jesus to see his miracles and hear him teach about God's love for them. One day, a huge crowd of 5,000 men and their families followed Jesus. It was late in the day when they reached Jesus and the people were getting hungry. The only one with any food was a little boy with five small loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus blessed the food. His closest followers and helpers gave it to the people. After everyone had plenty to eat, the helpers gathered up 12 baskets of leftover food. Many people wanted to see Jesus. When Jesus saw how sick and sad they were, he wanted to help them. One day, some people brought their children to him. His helpers tried to send them away. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me. Don't stop them. 
You must love and accept God like a little child if you want to enter heaven. After feeding thousands of men and their families with just five loaves of bread and two fish, Jesus told his followers to sail to a town on the other side of the lake. Go ahead to Bethsaida. I will come later. So his helpers got into a boat to cross the big lake, while Jesus went up into the hills to pray. In the middle of the lake, a strong wind began to blow, making large waves. In the boat, the followers were having trouble. Soon, they saw something that frightened them more than the storm. A man walking on the water. It's a ghost! But it wasn't a ghost. It was Jesus walking on the water. Have courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Peter, is it really the Lord? Lord, if that really is you, then tell me to come to you on the water. Come. So Peter left the boat and walked on the water to Jesus. But when he saw the wind and the waves, he became afraid and began to sink. Lord, save me! Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter. Your faith is small. Why did you doubt? After Peter and Jesus were in the boat, the wind became calm. Then, those who were in the boat worshipped Jesus. Truly, you are the Son of God. Jesus told a story about a man who had 100 sheep, but he lost one. <sighs> now what am I going to do? He left his 99 sheep safe at home and went looking for the one lost sheep. He searched everywhere. And when he finally found the lost sheep, he was so happy. He put the sheep on his shoulders and carried it home. Jesus told another story about a man who had two sons. The younger son said, Give me my share of the property and money. So the father divided the property and money between his younger and older son. The younger son went to another country, far away. He had lots of fun spending every bit of his money. After the younger son's money was gone, he got very hungry. 
a farmer gave him a job feeding pigs. As the son fed the pigs, he was so hungry. that he ate the pig food. After a while, he realized he had been very foolish. My father's servants have plenty of food. I'm going home. I'll tell my father that I have done wrong and ask him if I can just be a servant. So the young son went home. He was worried that his father wouldn't want him but his father had been looking for him every day for a long time. When he saw his son, the father ran to meet him. He hugged him, gave him new clothes, and had a party to welcome him home. My son was lost, but now he is found. One day, Jesus went to visit his friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Martha was busy getting the meal ready, while Mary sat listening to Jesus talk. Before long, Martha became angry and complained to Jesus. Lord, don't you care that Mary left me to do all the work alone? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, you were so worried and upset. There's only one important thing here. Mary has chosen the right thing, and it will never be taken away from her. Another time, as Jesus was traveling, he came to a small town where ten men saw him. Hey. They didn't come close to My Jesus Lord. because they had the horrible skin disease, leprosy. So they called out to him. Jesus, Jesus Lord. Lord. Master! Please help us. Jesus wasn't afraid to be close to the men. Go. Go on. Go show yourselves to the priests. As the men went to do what Jesus had told them, their leprosy disappeared. to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise be to God. On your way now. You were healed because you believed me. one of Jesus' helpers, came to tell Jesus it was time to pay taxes. But neither of them had any money. Jesus knew just what to do. Go to the lake and catch a fish. You will find a coin in its mouth. 
use that coin to pay our taxes. Sick people followed Jesus everywhere. They wanted him to heal them. One man who was blind heard that Jesus was walking by. He cried out, Jesus, please help me. People told the man to be quiet, but Jesus asked the man, What would you like me to do for you? The man said, I want to see again. So Jesus healed the man's eyes. How happy the man was to see again. Another time, one of Jesus' friends named Lazarus got very sick. Mary and Martha sent a message to Jesus asking him to come heal their brother. Even though Jesus loved his three friends, he waited two days to start the trip to see them. And Lazarus died before Jesus got there. Martha and Mary said, If you had come earlier, our brother wouldn't have died. Hearing this, Jesus cried. He went to the tomb of Lazarus. Lazarus, come out. And out came Lazarus, wrapped in the burial cloths. He was alive and well. The first Passover happened when God's people left Egypt long ago. After that, God's people celebrated the Passover every year. One year, Jesus and his closest followers traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. On the way, Jesus said, Go into town and find a young donkey colt. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone asks where you are taking it, say, the master needs it. When the men got back with the donkey colt, they spread their coats on its back and Jesus climbed on. The donkey started to clippity-clop through the town. People came running. They threw their coats down for the donkey to walk on. They took palm branches and waved them in the air, they shouted. Some of them remembered the scriptures that said, Your king is coming, sitting on a colt of a donkey. That night, it was time for the Passover dinner. Jesus and his closest followers gathered in a big room. Jesus stood up, took off his coat, got some water in a wash bowl, and wrapped a towel around his waist. Then he started washing his followers' feet. Jesus did this to show his friends they were to serve one another. While Jesus and his closest followers were eating the Passover dinner, Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it. He broke the bread apart and said, This bread is my body. Take and eat it to remember me. Next, he took a cup and said, This is my blood. When you drink this, 
remember me. Jesus knew this would be his last meal with his followers because he was about to be killed. He wanted his friends to always remember him. Jesus was nailed to a cross with a crown of thorns placed on his head and he was hung between two thieves. The skies turned black and Jesus died. Later that night, he was buried in a tomb. It had been three days since Jesus died. When the women got there, they couldn't believe their eyes. The stone had been rolled away. The soldiers were so frightened, they were like dead men. An angel of God was sitting on the stone. Don't be afraid. Jesus is alive. The women were as happy as they could be. They ran to tell the good news. Some of Jesus' friends didn't believe what the women said. But everything the women said was true. Jesus really was alive. He had risen from death. A little later, two of Jesus' friends were walking along a road when Jesus joined them. At first, they didn't know who it was, but they liked talking with this man. They invited him to have dinner at their house. So Jesus came in, and while he was thanking God for the food, they realized who he was. And then Jesus disappeared. Another night, Jesus appeared in a room where many of his friends were gathered. He told them to tell their family friends, neighbors, and strangers that he was alive. Share everything I've taught you, first with the people in Jerusalem, then to people everywhere. But wait in Jerusalem until God sends you a special gift of power from heaven. Jesus led his followers a little way out of town and prayed for them. While he was praying, he started to rise up into heaven. Then a cloud hid him from his followers. As everyone was standing there, staring up into heaven, two angels appeared beside them and said, Jesus has been taken away from you and into heaven. One day he will come back in the clouds, just like he went away. After Jesus went back to heaven, his friends and helpers were praying together in a big room. Suddenly, something amazing happened. At first, it sounded as if a huge wind were blowing. Next, flames of fire flickered over every person's head. Then God's Spirit came, and everyone began to speak in different languages. This was the gift from God that Jesus had promised his followers. The day that God's Spirit came to Jesus' followers, there were people from many countries in Jerusalem. These people spoke different languages. When they heard Jesus' friends praying, they went to see what the noise was all about.
they found Jesus' friends telling about the great things God had done. But they were all surprised to hear it in their own language. They asked, what does this mean? After that day, when the Holy Spirit first came, Jesus' followers began to do many miracles. Telling people about God's love and how Jesus had come to save them. One afternoon, Peter and John went to the temple a man who couldn't walk sat there begging for money. Peter looked at him and said, I don't have any money, but I do have something else I can give you. By the power of Jesus Christ from Nazareth, stand up and walk. Up jumped the man. His feet and ankles were now strong. He was healed. Philip was one of Jesus' 12 followers. He was busy telling people about Jesus when an angel spoke to him. Philip, go out on the road. Along came a very important officer from Ethiopia, riding in his chariot. He was reading the book of the prophet Isaiah. Philip ran alongside the chariot to talk to the man. Do you understand what you're reading? No. I need someone to explain it to me. The officer stopped the chariot. And invited Philip to sit with him. The verse of scripture the Ethiopian was reading was this. He was like a sheep being led to be killed. He said nothing and died without children to continue his family. Please tell me. Who was the prophet talking about? Philip explained that Isaiah was actually writing about Jesus. As they continued, the Ethiopian man began to believe in Jesus. Soon the chariot came near a stream. Look, here's some water. What stops me from being baptized right now? So they stopped the chariot. And Philip baptized him. When they walked back out of the water, God wanted Philip to preach in another place. So, just like that, Philip was gone. So the officer returned home with his heart full of joy. After Jesus had been taken up into heaven, mean King Herod began doing terrible things to the followers of Jesus. He even had some of them killed. Some Jewish people were happy that Herod was doing this because they didn't believe in Jesus or like his followers. 
So to please the people, Herod decided to throw Peter in jail too. The king ordered 16 soldiers to guard him over the Passover holiday. But while Peter sat in jail, God's people gathered in their homes to pray for him. That night, an angel came into the jail cell and woke Peter up. Hurry, get up. Peter's chains fell off, but the soldiers kept sleeping. Follow me. but he followed the angel right past all the guards. When they came to the iron gate of the prison, it swung open on its own. But after they had walked a few steps into the city, the angel disappeared. So Peter went to the house of some friends who lived nearby and knocked on the door. A servant girl went to the door and asked who was there. Who is it? It's Peter. The Lord sent his angel to rescue me from Herod. The girl recognized Peter's voice and quickly ran to tell the group. Peter is at the door. Hello? But the friends didn't believe the girl and went back to praying for Peter. They didn't realize that their prayers had already been answered. They finally listened to the girl and went to open the door. And that's how God saved Peter from the mean King Herod. And an angel came to me. He freed me from my chains, and he let me out the door. There was a mean man chasing after Jesus' followers. His name was Saul. He was sure that everything people were saying about Jesus was wrong. He didn't believe Jesus had risen from death. He was so sure he was right that he hurt and even killed people who believed in Jesus. Well, guess what? God wanted Saul to work for him and spread the news of Jesus. So one day, when Saul was on a journey, God sent a bright flash of light. It was so bright that Saul fell to the ground. Saul. Why are you doing things against me? Who are you? I am Jesus. Now get up and go into the city. When Saul stood up, he was blind. His friends had to lead him into the city. Saul wouldn't eat or drink anything for three days. God sent a man named Ananias to find Saul and pray for him so that Saul could see again. Ananias was scared of Saul, but he believed in Jesus and went anyway. Ananias 
prayed for Saul. And Saul's sight came back. On that day, God changed Saul's heart to make him kind to those who believed in Jesus. After that, Saul was called Paul, and he began to tell others about Jesus, too, and became the greatest missionary of all time. After Paul became a follower of Jesus, he went everywhere teaching people about the Lord. Many times, there was no building where he could meet with friends. One day, he and his friends were looking for a place to meet by the river when they saw a group of women. One woman was Lydia. Her job was selling purple cloth. She loved God, but didn't know about Jesus. When Paul told her all about Jesus, Lydia believed that Jesus was God's son. Lydia invited Paul and his friends to stay at her house. Some people didn't like what Paul was preaching about Jesus. So they caught Paul and his helper, Silas, and threw them in jail. The two men were beaten, and their feet were fastened tightly, so they couldn't run away. That night, instead of complaining or crying, Paul and Silas prayed and sang songs to God. Suddenly, there was an earthquake, and the jail doors popped open. The jailer thought his prisoners had escaped. He knew if the prisoners had escaped, he would be in big trouble. Paul called to him. We are all here. What must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and all the people in your house. Then he and all his people were baptized immediately. So the jailer took Paul and Silas to his home to wash their wounds and feed them. He and his family were very happy because they now believed in God. Paul was a missionary who traveled to Athens in Greece to tell people about Jesus. In Athens, he saw an altar with writing that said, To a God who is not known. Paul told the people about the God who made the whole world. God does not live in temples that men build, but in their hearts. Paul told them about Jesus coming back to life after being dead. Some of the people laughed at Paul, but some of the people believed in Jesus. Later, Paul got on a big ship to go to the city of Rome. The ship went out very slowly because of strong winds blowing against it. Finally, they came to a safe harbor. I don't think it's a good idea to leave the harbor. 
But the captain disagreed, and he sailed anyway. Soon a wind came up and blew hard on the ship. The sailors couldn't steer it. Paul knew they were in trouble. They might sink. We all need to eat to stay strong for the trouble ahead. Before long, the ship hit a sandbank and began to break into pieces. Everyone had to jump into the sea and swim for the beach. They all made it to the shore safely. All the people from the shipwreck were now on the island of Malta. The people who lived on the island were very kind. They built a fire and invited the passengers to warm themselves. Paul helped by gathering wood for the fire. But as he did, a poisonous snake bit him on the hand. Paul just shook the snake off into the fire. He was not even hurt. The island people waited for him to fall down dead from the poison. But Paul was just fine. The biggest promise God ever made was that his children will live with him in heaven forever. He said that there would be a new heaven and a new earth. And we would get a new body, one that never gets old. In the new heaven, no one will ever be sad, or cry, or feel any pain, and no one will ever die. The streets will be made of gold, and there will be huge gates of pearl. Everything will be more beautiful than anything you can imagine. And best of all, Jesus will be there, and we will be with him forever. Always remember this. No one has ever seen. No one has ever heard. no one has ever imagined. What God has prepared for those who love him. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9.